In tonight's Nation Divider report, one of the most closely contested battles from yesterday ended with yet another loss for same-sex marriage advocates. It happened in Maine. By a thin margin, the state voted to reject a law legalizing same-sex marriage. Now, the outcome was a crushing defeat for gay rights supporters. For those against same-sex marriage, it was yet another victory that they say demonstrates the will of the people. With us now, Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council and author of the book public, Personal Faith, Public Policy. Also with us is Evan Wolfson, an attorney, plus the founder and executive director of the organization Freedom to Marry, working for marriage equality nationwide. Evan, advocates of same-sex marriage in Maine had more money, more volunteers. From your vantage point, what happened? Well, what happened is it's very difficult for a minority to persuade a majority to stop discriminating. And we came very close to persuading people in Maine to uphold the freedom to marry, but didn't reach everybody in particularly the more rural corners of the state with the conversations, with the personal stories, with the making it real that we need to do in order to move hearts and minds. And we need to keep doing that work. Tony, same-sex marriage defeated Maine, as Evan said, by a relatively small margin. Washington State, a domestic partnership law, passed by almost an equally small margin. Do yesterday's results prove anything other than the fact that we're still very much a nation divided on this topic? Well, this is unique, Anderson. This was the 31st state where voters have had the chance they have stood for traditional marriage. But what's different here is that you had a legislature that had special interest money come in, uh, make some moves in the legislature. The legislature then created same-sex marriage. The first time we've had a legislature created followed by a vote of the people that have repudiated what the legislature did. That's very significant because uh, this law had been passed. It wasn't a completely uh, defensive posture. They had to, to go out in work to overturn what the legislature had done. That's significant, and also it's, it's significant, because I can imagine, as a former legislator, what some of the conversations were in, in Maine today. These legislators who voted for this, and in their districts, the voters went to the polls and overturned it. There's now an infrastructure there, and there could be some political fallout to this. Evan, would it have made a difference if President Obama had, had talked about this more, more, or had talked about it at all, frankly? Well, President Obama does oppose these kinds of discriminatory measures, re restricting and repealing and stripping away rights, and it would have helped, I believe, had he spoken out more clearly. But I also have to point out that Maine actually has a history of the legislature passing laws, the voters undoing them, the legislature passing them again, and the voters then supporting them. In fact, in the non-discrimination law, the law protecting uh, people against being fired in the workplace because of their sexual orientation, we had to pass the law three times before it got approved by the voters, and now the state is safer and better. So do you and that's th do you precisely think, the kind of conversation Do you think the legislature here. is going to take this up again in Maine? I have no doubt of that. And what Mr. Perkins left out in his reference to the politicians is that not a single elected official has lost his or her seat because of his or her stand in support Wait, of the Freedom that's, to that's, Marry in years. And in that's years. interesting, uh, Evan, because there's it, up till now, it has been courts, it has been judges that has pushed same-sex marriage on the people. And the people haven't been able to hold anybody accountable. That changes with Maine. In Maine, you know, Maine is in the Northeast. It's a liberal-leaning state. Uh, and so this is unique in that the voters went to this much trouble, even though they were outspent two to one, they stood for the traditional definition of marriage. And this is going to have ramifications on other state legislatures, I think even as close as New York and New Jersey, where legislators are going to think twice before they pick up this special interest agenda. Actually, I think what we're going to see is other states move forward to end exclusion because they've been hearing from the families in their districts, in their states, in their communities, that denying the freedom to marry hurts those families and helps no one. And this is not a question of standing for traditional marriage. Traditional marriage means respect for love and commitment and dedication and self-sacrifice, and that's exactly what these committed in couples in Maine hope to do someday, and they will be able to do it someday. No, we, we, the definition of marriage has been proven throughout history. It's a union of men and women. It's not. Well, actually, a union. that's not true. Men and it, women is closer to it, but actually, Mr. Perkins, marriage is not defined by who is denied it. Denied it. Marriage is defined by the commitment the people make and their willingness to take on the rules and the responsibilities, oh. and that's what these families in Maine are seeking to do. And what society has done is put boundaries on what marriage is. I'm not free to marry whoever I want, nor are you. There, the society has seek, sought to, to give a certain status to marriage because it has benefits that gives to society when it raises children and children benefit when they're with a mom and a dad. And society and, and has seen that through. I mean, it's in the anthropological, in, 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 the, in the record of history. And we're seeing society staying uh, with that tradition and actually, with that history. Actually, 
actually denying the couples in Maine who are raising kids the safety and security of marriage does nothing to help anyone else's kids, but it does harm their kids, and that's well, part of the conversation I, I that we need to continue. I think people also realize having. that this is not just about the freedom to marry; it's about losing the freedom uh, to teach your own kids. Uh, your own beliefs. It's about your freedom to speak freely without intimidation, as we've seen that, by some that, of your cohorts in Maine and California. That's simply, that's simply not true. And, no, and, you it know, is. Trying, I mean, Mr. Perkins, trying to make yourself the victim when your organization funded an attack to strip away rights from other families rings a little false. What happened no, today, think, what look, happened today is that some this. families... Excuse me. What happened today is that some families were denied important protections, although they came very close to persuading their neighbors to stand with them. And in the conversations ahead, more people will move in fairness, just as so many other Americans have. T Tony, let me ask you, do you, I mean, with each of these races that we have seen so far, and as you said, I mean, every time the voters have voted uh, against supporting same-sex marriage, but but the but the but the percentages are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Do you believe the tide of history is moving against your position? No, I mean look look at what we're talking about, uh, Anderson. We're talking about Maine, the northeast corner, a very liberal part of the state. The last time we saw this, California. I mean, these are states where they thought it was a foregone conclusion that same-sex marriage was going to take root and be established there. They were shocked. We saw, and I was on your show talking about after California, it was a shock, it was a huge so shock that the voters in California rejected court-imposed same-sex marriage. I, Same I, thing I think in a Maine. Lot of and if you, look at the, if you look at the polling data nationally, it's over 60% of Americans are opposed to the idea of same-sex well, marriage. Well, well, a, well, actually, that's not true, but actually yes, when the is. Supreme... No, it isn't, but when the Supreme Court struck down race restrictions on marriage in 1967, 70% of the American that's people opposed interracial marriage. I mean, that's not the same thing. We're talking that's, about redefining marriage. No, you're, Those are still, you're, not, you're talking about redefining marriage. You're no, taking, actually, Mr. Yes, Perkins, you are. we're out of Mr. time, but Perkins, Evan, I, I want to give you the final thought to, to just respond to that. To keep it even. Thank you. When the couple across the street is able to marry and have those protections and take on those responsibilities, it doesn't change or threaten anyone else's marriage. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Evan Wolfson, I appreciate it. Tony Perkins, it was a good discussion.